said one more time. And you regret everything. <laughs> All right, here we go. Game live for real, for real, for real. Cirque with the double flash and the kit on the CT end. And Shiro had to go back and grab that bomb, so a little late to the party. But towards top mid, he'll get a little bit of kneeling. I've liked seeing this uh, growth from Neelan since his addition to EG. What was once just overly aggressive is now a bit better timed aggression. And it's still him and his style. But I think now he's a bit more gelled in with his teammates. He's not getting aggressive and then leaving his teammates to just try and keep up. No, he's doing it while they're there. Nafany point blank with a Glock into automatic. Little bit of breeze left over here. Seven health. He'll be burned back and Axile's on the board early. We'll get the CT's boost on smoke. No impact off that. Shiro holds flank and Cloud9 content with what's happened. Smoke's down on the cross. Walk that bad boy right into the site. And when Inters pops up, Cirque's a dead man walking. Yeah, yeah. They just had him everywhere right there. I think they try to boost up with uh, not much ammo left over. That was just protocols after protocols, dude. Automatic comes through the smoke. He gets blind as he's coming through. They molly back site and they're covering the cross properly while they're scaling on top of the site. And then the boost is just completely useless. The smoke is there. It's coming up. There's one at car. There's one along. There's two on the site itself. There was really just no gaps right here. So a, a very, very good start. Uh, if only EG got to play them the other day. Right. And we have, uh, yeah, we have seen EG have kind of dug themselves a little hole. I mean, they got to overtime and lost versus 9Z. That would have been one of the easier potentially wins that they could have picked up. Um, yeah, they haven't done too much here at the challenger stage, but they were trending in the right direction kind of leading up to it, aside from the showdown. Nice Ooh, shots. Great tags. Look oh, at that. No. They're scared. They're running. Three players from Cloud9 down to 30 or less. Napanee's going to bring it back with at least a kill, but now... Oh my god, these HP bars from Cloud9? Yeah, but they rotated to the left side as Cloud9 were falling back, and now they're jumping up onto Xbox and looking to take an open sight. So I think this was a little, slightly rough rotation. They were definitely too scared to go into B. They probably should have just chilled for a second, and now they're going to hear them making their way over. But it's going to be full util on that molly to lock off that spawn player. I think they loosened up on this position a little bit too easily. All the util in the world just to make sure nobody can kind of run rampant. Oh. But there goes Hobbit, the little that was left. Ooh, oh, automatic. Get some damage on Axile, but Nafany's just going to take that quick peek straight down on him. We've got the Galil in the hands of Hexed. Young Canadian talent trying to leave his mark on this major. Has been very open with his nervousness and slower start. But this could be a round where he would have gotten a chance to clean up players, but Cloud9, even though every single player gets tagged up by damage before they hit that site, it's still going to be the conversion. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't communicated that there were two scout tags in or they thought the committal would still come through. But either way, it's a super solid round overall by Cloud9. They keep everyone alive. They even like make sure to all use all their utility properly on their exec, so it's as hard as possible for anybody if they were even holding onto the site. And that deep CT molly is just the kind of final nail. Neil comes out of mid here. The one kill for EG. Uh, there hasn't been much consistency amongst the five in terms of who's, you know, doing the most output, I'd say, so far. I would say maybe Breeze. But I think they've all kind of taken terms, either top fragging or bottom fragging in the three games they played so far. Automatic actually a top 10 player at majors. Now it's an inflated stat because less majors, so I think it was something like 26 maps overall. Um, but that just uh, goes to show you that when they were competing for the Boston run, he definitely left his mark in big games in really, really high pressured moments. Uh, this major performance has not really been up to snuff. Same could be said, of course, for the whole team, but... What did Yanko call it? The flukiest major <laughs> run of all time? Yeah, you can... You can really... It's really easy to spot a face fan. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Listen, I can't say I disagree, but... I mean, you should. I can't well, say I, I don't like it. Oh, the fluke. They had the hardest major run of all time. Yanko. You want to argue about that? Analyst. 
<laughs> okay. Guns up. <laughs> Evil Genius is time for a buy. Let's see if Cirque can uh, start to maybe bring back those numbers, because I got to say that head to head on the desk was brutal. Neil and he'll be gunned down first. Breeze, quick trade back. Chance at a second, but Hobbit's got both those kills. A 2K as he gets back behind the dumpster and then fades back to the rest of his teammates who actually decide to go back and forth. And, well, there's some uh, tools to pick up here. Yeah, they left behind a little bit of utility and a couple of better guns. That's right, the A1S is better than the AK. I don't like the sounds of that either. That's right. Evil Genius is going to look to be a little active towards middle. A hinge smoke delivered from beyond. Hex. Oh, nice taps. Down goes Shiro, and he gets away. It's a big play from the young kid. Nade up onto the catwalk. Takes a little chip damage into Nafani. But that's a big pickup. That's what puts this back to the even numbers. Yeah, but they're playing from the site with no power whatsoever. So they're throwing some nades here, but they're just leaving. I think they're actually getting ready to... This sounds weird, but I think they're actually getting ready to save because they don't have long control. They know they lost it early. They also don't have a counterattack on Cat. And I think they're really hoping Cloud9 just makes some kind of absurd error. But right now, I guess they could be going for the retake off Cat, which is the other option. 25 seconds, and Inters will be the first point of contact. Going to have to hold it. Insta headshot into Hex. No helmets here with the Kevlar, so the first frag goes down smooth. Automatic trades it, keeps up the pressure off the flash, slides down to CT. Nafany ready. Flash comes in from Hobbit to support, and Nafany's just going to peel back ever so slightly. Better keep his head down, because that op's hunting. Oh, what a shot. Oh, my God. And he just smashes him inside that bomb site. So Hobbit, sure enough, into the 1v2. Cirque's at this distance. I don't believe there's a smoke on site. No tap out of the bomb just no yet. Hobbit's going to play it tucked. Of course. They, they don't want to get on it? Kit for automatic. Oh, he has a kit. Oh, but Cirque, baby. Big booms. Okay. I thought they were walking away, but they were just working on the cat re-aggression. So they, they did read that correctly after losing long control that uh, Cloud9 were going to go for it. Good round. Nice shots from Cirque. Back-to-back headshots. That's, yeah, that one through default box is huge. And coming into the event, um, uh, he was... He, w he actually started playing well again. Like, he had, like, a really good kind of trend up right before. Um, I think even in, the, in the, some of their losses recently outside of the Major, the team didn't play well, but he definitely did. Um, in the grander scheme of things, of course, it's, it's easy to be critical of Cirque. Statistically, not one of the best offers out there, but... He is shooting well right now. When it matters. Tournament life on the line. Hex tucked behind boxes. Nafany's going to inch his way inwards. And Cirque gets another kill in. Hex is able to dive back into the site. We've got fire at the feet of multiple players. Damage all over, and EG just crunch. They throw Cirque into the tunnels. Axile tries to bring it back, but it's just the one kill. Everybody does their job. Yeah, not bad, man. They're just everywhere. They have all the choke points covered for the attack. No bomb plants. They don't even cross into the site. I mean, they barely get off the staircase there for Axile on the way in. Got creamed in the front door. Easy. Nice to see Neilan doing what he does. Slides out through smoke, but into the action. And in an instant, it is Shiro with the op impact. Neilan from success story to dead. Poor guy, was he just going for the cross standard or? I think he oh no, he died. Middle. He died pushing mid. Yeah. Paid the price. There's one known entity. It is, of course, that Shiro's op will hit hard throughout this series. It has all tournament long. I say that like it's not day three. But ridiculous numbers. Automatic gets the headshot, but Inters lives. The nades gonna find him. He survived the first one, so good thing they threw both. Just enough to secure the kill and even back 4v4. Really like how fast they were about those nades as well. Oftentimes you'll see teams take too long and, and miss the opportunity. Ooh, Flash kind of catching a mid-transition. Exile taking steps closer. EG slide down. Cirque also going to find his mark. 
Fourth off kill of the map. Maxile boosting up and over. There's nobody actually in the site to be taken down, though. Closest is automatic. Just tucked down on boxes, trying to minimize himself. Allows for them to cross over, so EG very well aware of what's going down. Axile catches it, though. He checks. He had that moment to just kind of collect his thoughts and not get pressured from anywhere, so why not? Look Ooh. straight down, and now a nice goose position with Naphany on the ramp. Yeah, goose with no Molotov for the CT side, so really good spot to be if you're Axile, but a lot rests on his shoulders. Naphany only with an MP9 here. Hero, Hero on the cross misses. Two shots off the mark. MP9 does a little bit of damage. Axile's not checked. Slides into Breeze. And then, sure enough, Shiro and Naphne find their targets. Cert's gonna run for the hills. It's Cloud9 in with the fourth T round win, even despite going down a man. Yeah, they did try to cover the option, but um, the attack was coming in, you know, first from the rifles who were crossing up Cat. So Cloud9 cleaned that up, and I think it's gotta be Axile's kills, probably the, the really big one there. Automatic and CT spawn. I think it looks a little scarier on the retake if he's still alive. And it can be scary for the T to peer over that ledge in moments like this. So that's why Automatic is just kind of caught looking unawares. It is risky for Axel to do that, especially if there's going to be a cat attack coming in or if there's someone in CTs looking up already. Yeah, I felt with, a, with that. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, that's just unlucky. Sorry, Hexed. Yeah. Bad way to start your morning. Fast. Axile Whoa. inside smoke. Cirque holds. Look at this. I mean, they're still here on on long, kind of ready to fight. Cirque. Whoa, no smoke, just falling back. Very, very vulnerable positions right now. I'm not exactly sure what the idea is. Let's see if they flash retake. Oh, they just take the shot to bait and breeze. Beautiful aim. Just the Fomus. Double dink on the Fomus. Hobbit picks up one towards mid. Cirque snips enters. And Hobbit's going to keep that pressure up, Catwalk. Counter terrorists all just falling back down into their spawn, barring automatic. They keep Cloud doing a nine. They keep doing a similar thing where they just give up control, immediately go for the cat retake. Hobbit might know it's coming. Let's see how he responds. Wow, Breeze still shooting hard. And automatic as well, in with another. So Shiro's gonna have to do it all. A 1v4 clutch attempt. There's a gap on this. Oh, and he gets passed with 74 health. Don't peek him. Could have gone back to that op fight. Instead. Puts the smoke Ooh. down and gets aggressive, thinking he can catch Breeze. And it almost <laughs> works, but Breeze hits hard. Three wow. kills on the round, all headshots. What a round. And critical. That's finding a... Hobbit on Cat, making sure he can't hold that end of it, and then that ender. That was sick, man. That was a really nice round from Breeze. That's that headshot percentage that you expect to see from him, you know, year over year. I like the attempt from Shiro, though. I mean, if Breeze wasn't ultra sharp in that moment, it could have gotten very scary. I think Shiro tied the clutch record at a t tournament. Maybe it was this. It was either this year like or this last year. year. Yeah, it feels like, like four, feels like about a year ago. Yeah, so either the start or the end of last. I think he tied Simple's record. So unbelievable in those one vxs. Nealon gonna have a good chance to pad stats. It's the Desert Eagle of Hobbit down. And pistols out in this one. <laughs> Loses out to the P250. It is better than a USB. Yes. Fast. Enters holds. Bomb comes over. Watch Axel do something interesting with his Glock. Surely not. Breeze on full alert. Yeah, Breeze too sharp right now. You know, we talk about like automatic needing to step up and, and having the ability to do so. I feel like sometimes people still sleep on Breeze. It's easy to forget that he was one of the best North American players a couple of years ago. Yeah, one of the few that have made the top 10, or sorry, top 20. His statistics taper off with the team's performance. EG went to a very dark place. But uh, feels like they're coming back to the light. Not just a bunch of cave trolls anymore, but Axile. Oh, he's waiting no for the way. chance. Oh, oh, he's on burst. Oh, oh my God, Inters, he's got three kills on a P250. What? And they both get guns. No way. There's no armor here, so let's not get crazy, but. Why? Oh. Inters tries to jump over, Hexed he, he is already raiding. Hexed in CT. Oh. 
Now it's Shiro's chance. Little bits of damage, but just can't win those duels. So Hex will pick up both kills to save what could have been an embarrassing situation. Yeah, that's well done there. Being there, but uh, not being passive. Nice round from Inters, for sure. And Ax I mean, Axel, I guess it doesn't matter. I mean, Axel would have been an extra body with an extra gun at long, so maybe it does matter. Who, who put that thing on burst fire? I don't know. You know, sometimes you're just, you're just waiting for something to happen, you know, spamming the right click. And yeah. You forget, you hit it an odd amount you of times. Count your, you didn't count your clicks walking out of spawn. You know what they say, never count your clicks before they hatch. Who is that, who is that again? Who's that? Socrates. Oh, Socrates, right. One of those old guys. Quick little tech pause here as we get Hobbit back into the server. So EG, tying at four, making things interesting. It was a 3-0 start to Cloud9. That last round didn't give me hope in EG. It kind of kind of just made me hold my breath a second. But also, what are you going to do? Inters with the P250 just shredding. Will not happen every round. And all that's really important is it didn't net them a round win. I like these jerseys. The new EG ones, very nice. Mint green. Yeah. We've never seen mint green jerseys. <clears throat> Which is great. Go for a color people don't use. A lot of the new jerseys for this major have been pretty solid. I actually haven't seen many misses, honestly. Yep. All the uh, even Astralis's new jerseys, who you know, rest in peace. But if they were here, their jerseys would look really cool. Right. Yeah, there's like a special edition. I saw. I was looking at the store here in Rio in the stadium, and there's a there's like a it's like a Brazilian color theme of all the jerseys, essentially. Wow. They all look really cool. Pandering, shameless. You know me. I know there's somebody out there listening right now who could get me one for free. Mm -hmm. But I want new ones. Oh, that made yeah. him smile. Yeah, I do. You can keep the hoodie, though. <laughs> okay. Unnecessary roughness. I ain't about that life. Gaming with long sleeves. Stewie Stewie want a major in a Cloud9 hoodie. Yeah, but sleeves down. <sighs> That's insane. <laughs> How is that a fluke? Blue keys. Blue keys, he did it. Back into the action with the full buy both ends. Bomb outside of the tunnels. Hex presses in, puts out the fire. And he's going to sit here a second. Well, Cloud9 have been able to very very consistently get long control and cat control both at the same time. Both That's supposed to spell disaster. EG have been pretty good about figure out how to kind of retake Cat uh, later. That, of course, could be stopped if there's any kind of lower lurker, but some of these rounds are lower number situations, so it's unlikely that C9 have that. Maybe EG no. But at a certain point, you give up too much control, of course. It's going to catch up with you. This time around, they look to be a bit more stubborn about holding on to long. Could be a great idea. One of the only problems with, like, committing to long like this is just it's the one part of the map that's just so far away from everything else and the scariest to full flank on, so... Over committing on resources in the form of people sometimes isn't warranted, but I think in this game it makes a lot of sense. We've seen Cloud9 end A almost every time, but look where the bomb is. It's a fake. Yeah, he's gonna jump it. Oh, he's successful. Ooh, sanctuary, long range spray. Jesus. Hobbit gonna gun him down. Hexed will fall in the end. And Automatic's not able to get back that CT control because the smoke is lasting long. Drop another, and Shiro finds that flank from Breeze. That could have been the way for the CTs to just maybe try and clamp back down on spawn, but with Breeze dead to the AWP, all of a sudden, EG have to let this fifth slip the way of Cloud9. Shiro's sniper hits the dirt. That'll be a little freebie for Breeze. Shiro has 154 kills so far in the challenger stage. Damn. Oh, Hobbit. I think he's going to set like an all-time record. Even if you count all the rounds, I'm going to assume. That's what happens when you go down 0-2. Three best of threes. If you play your cards right. If. For now, so good. It is five to the way of Cloud9. Mm -hmm. 
And rebuy, e, no sir, EG. Awkward economic spot. Yeah, so that one's obviously sensible, right? They go for a fake on A where they've been just hitting A over and over again. It's also been late round as well, which is makes sense for EG to hang out for a long time on long control and just wait for that split to come. But they think ahead. So it's a full investment, but it's still only one rifle. One rifle went off here for EG. Jesus. <laughs> he went for the ultra timing shot and actually almost hit it. Breeze just walking by that. Very close to death. Close call, but cuts the jump short. That would have been a nice way to start off this force. Is that Deagle in Nealon's hand? MP9 for Hex, point blank crossfire, better hold him back. It's all the Cloud9 coming in. Ooh, two off Hex, SMG, tucks back onto car. He's hoping automatic can maybe help by shooting the M4 through the doorway, but now Nafany's got the better gun, the better spot and the better footing inside this bomb site. The mid play will not be held by Cloud9. Instead, Axile looks to come and join his teammates. Bomb crosses over, and Shiro will be freed up as Nafany takes the role of the plant. Yeah, walking up to the default plant, they've got eyes on the door, no one coming through tunnels. Cloud9 shielding themselves from this option. And the smoke lands inside of Car, just in case there's someone there. It gives them some time to go for this. Flash comes over. Nafany holds off the first one, but automatic trades in. And now they're going to try to reroute back through window. We've got Cirque posted on the tunnel peak. Axile can not step out. Shiro tucked behind box. Sees both CTs. Time's critical. And the Tech-9 comes out. He's getting rushed down. Point blank. Nicely oh. dodged. Another jump. And Ooh. Shiro snaps it up. Drops Cirque dead. Cloud-9 to a six. Oh, Beautiful angle usage right there around the box, just with the amount of time remaining, reads exactly how it'll be approached, man. He is so slippery and so sharp as well. Another clutch to the tally, 1v2. Yeah, in indeed. Yeah, unstoppable for him from Shiro this event. This is just brutal. What an adjustment. Yeah, and that's just an expensive round. A very important round to retake, of course. Just pistols now for EG as they forced up yeah, shout behind out to the op. Two kills on that MP9. You know, slowed things down a little. He did his part, that's for sure. But now Evil Genius is nothing but a P250 to lean on. And already Cloud9 setting their target on that A site. It's going to come easily here at number 11. Shiro drops Breeze, re-peaks. USP's getting splattered at the top of mid. Just doesn't miss that much. Ten twenty-four black bars. What about it? Shiro. Oh, that's his, yeah. okay. Just in case people are wondering. I feel like after every game, if you check Google search trends, uh, Shiro res. You Shiro know what I mean? Res. Okay, okay. Yep. 2K native, if anybody's wondering about mine. Yeah, I'm sure there's so many. There's, there's got to be some. Yeah, at least one Google's blowing up right, right now. That $300 ends up working out for Hexed. Knocks Cloud9 down by one, but here we go. Guns back up. Shiro, oh, oh my God! Again, dude, Hex. Jesus. He's been he's been hitting the legs on the cross, through the door on the cross, and this time just straight up skewered. They also smoke low, or they they smoked in front of Xbox, and then he jumped over it. So they wanted to test Shiro. They probably shouldn't. It was also probably an avoidable death right there. Welcome to the major, kid. At least they get Nafany back. Automatic doing a good job of clawing away the man advantage, but now he's very wounded, so we'll have to keep an eye on him, how he slots in and how he can manage to help out. Utility very low for EG as well, but Cloud9 taking a bit of a glance towards this mid play. 
But honestly, it's the right call. Three of the four members of EG towards A. Nealon, he could press out before they commit, but Shiro gets a sliver of his shoulder through the window, and that is all she wrote. Yes. The most aware player ever continues to climb that scoreboard. We'll send three EG players to save. Good sight choice here from Nafany. Bob Nine take a quick eighth. At least for EG, the three saves will help out on the money front. Must be so fun to play CS if you're Shiro. 14 and 5 right now. You think it translates to PUBG, though? Probably. Yeah, probably. That's true. I feel like there's a certain type of gamer who's just, you know, you just. Mm -hmm. He's probably even good. Plus at he's Dota. sneaky. Plus he's sneaky. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, you're good at all FPS games, but, but put them elsewhere oh. and it's over. Not Shiro. Yeah. I don't know what the top rank is in Dota, but I bet he's that. Yeah, he's definitely immortal. Hell, I bet you he's even good at Hearthstone. Yeah. Can you, is that still, can you still play it? I don't know. Okay. We'll play it safe. Magic the Gathering. Nice, yeah. MTG never dies. Cloud nine. Shiro, Shiro installed Twitter oh. after beating uh, Imperial. Okay. Just to say that it is one of the best feelings in his life to beat Imperial because he was watching Fallen demos in 1.6. Pain is respects. And then he probably uninstalled Twitter and got back to Deathmatch. Don't be afraid, it's just a moth. Dude, it's a big one. <laughs> oh, that's a big one, man. And it's pissed. All right. If I screech unexpectedly, y'all know why. Because I pinched him. <laughs> Shiro's ready for the top mid walk up. Ooh. Oh no, that's in tunnels. It's Neilan getting a little curious. An adventure on his own. Nafany has been given some utility to throw. We'll see if Automatic decides to see this as an invitation to wrap long. Could be a fun play to make. Assuming he doesn't get caught, he's going to hear those grenades flying down long. So sure enough, EG start to stack in time. Hobbit doing his thing, trying to hunt Hexed in tunnels. No one's watching. This could be timed perfectly. Automatic comes around. Oh, but Inter survives. Gets dinked down to 10. Damn, they react so fast. And Hex still in here. But the damage, it still matters. You know, Inter's now opping. He's low. Walk up onto Cat here, and Hex has a, he has a great angle, but they're coming in from beneath. Oh, he shoots some bullets off the shadow, Hobbit. but they react, and Hobbit is waiting in upper tunnels. Yep, look at that open B site with oh, the util man. as well. Into the smoke and the molly and then all the nades and the rush, and everybody's just running to B. Oh, and it's man. like there was never a chance, but there really was. There, there was. really was. Yep. If Hex is able to get a couple off the mid play, then all of a sudden there's less nades here. EG could try to press and force that rotate. Axile could still die. He's sectioned off, but of course, he's just gonna fight. And if Axile can really find his slot, groove, move as he wow. pleases, then all of a sudden, this is an EG who are gonna have to fight a Cloud9 that none of their other opponents had to, right? Axile has been absent. Yes, yes, he has been. And if like, Shiro gets 37 kills and Axile gets 20, they win every map. Unfortunately, that is that is how simple CS is. And uh, in the last few days, Axel has not been able to do that. Oh, Hobbit's going to keep this one sharp. So catching both Hexed over towards the tunnels and that last frag as well. Gives Cloud9 their ninth two to go on this T side. Mm -hmm. And then off down, just a very expensive round. Update, the Moth tried to attack Connor. I punched it right in the face. <laughs> I punched it and now it's gone. I think it's gone. KO. Yeah. Don't catch me slipping. I'm like the Nate Diaz of esports. <laughs> you swear less. Professional after all. Yeah. Stockton. Naphany. Oof. Almost got a little bit of breeze. Oh! oh! There's a little bit of breeze. And Shiro, 
He may be looking the wrong way. Hobbit, he'll get it back with two kills, but he just let Shiro die. Straight up, let that man die. Moves forward into the Scout of Automatic, who dives down into the site. And Inters is just gonna run him down up closer, personal. Sees the second. Woo. Inters has also been keeping things sharp. So it's not just Axile that's coming back into form. We saw some really good events out of Inters in the recent months. Yeah. And that was way above his average. It did kind of stop, stutter out a little towards the RMRs, but he's not meant to be doing what he was. Yeah. So he to can't. see this, this is great. This is three players on 11 kills right behind Shiro's 14. Every time Shiro looks at that scoreboard right now, there's a smile on his face. Yeah, I mean, Inters basically can't top frag because of his role. And it's just, that's fine. He's one of the hardest kind of support players in the game. He's still insane. And to be on Cloud9, of course, kind of speaks the most uh, about how good he is. Um, but if he's getting, like, to that 20 kill mark or something like that, that's kind of the equivalent of Axel getting 30 with his rolls. And All right, well, the fire, it kind of works to block both of their visions. It's totally obscured, and so the shot gets missed. But, wow, look at the damage here. Axel down to three health. They made sure if Shiro wanted to cross left that he couldn't stay there for long. They're running all the way back around. EG don't know about all the damage they've done. But they might have a guess. And the late long control may pay off finally. EG have tried this a couple of times. Uh oh. Breeze in the corner. Yeah, Napani's gonna fall to that. Excellent little two piece here from Breeze, and Cirque's not gonna let the pressure off. The little that remains of Cloud9. It's not even the time that's their biggest problem. It's the fact that they have 35 health together. So it looks like EG are going to slip a fifth one onto the board. And honestly, Automatic, Hex, and Breeze all coming together to put up some numbers. It's kneeling with that last piece. So they'll lead at the 10-5 half. But we'll see if EG can take to this T side and cause problems like Greyhound did. Yes, I think EG, one of the things right now is EG just going, damn. Playing a little bit better than they did versus Greyhound. Heroes here, Axel's with them. The team, I mean, some of the protocols, like starting off the pistol round, then some of those A exacts, even the B splits, literally everything they did was really hard to deal with. So, EG have their work cut out for them. Sometimes you would think, oh, it's great. Let's get a team who's in 1 2. They're not playing well, but they've probably had some deep talks and conversations and extra practice and. Broken through some psychological barriers. Hopefully the same here is the case for EG. Their only victory at the moment by way of BO1 win over IHC. Oof. Damn it. That'll leave a mark. Shiro hit in the head by Utility. But uh, it doesn't hurt as much as that bullet sure did. Cirque will find the 5v4. We've got Inter and Axile wounded already. Not going to stop them, seemingly from shutting down the top of ramp. Axile oh. hits another. And we've got Hobbit on the flank. Oh. Taps automatic, oh. Naphany's in, and Cloud9 grind them to a halt. How'd they do that, man? They got them falling back. That original kind of retake tactic through the smoke doesn't work. Cirque shuts them down on the first peak. Two guys in the back are just looking for the first available piece of cover they can find. And then Axile hits this. You know why? Because Axile showed up. Axile's here this evening. Yeah. 13 kills off the 2K from the pistol, almost yeah. tying Shiro. Yeah. And nobody was even close to Shiro. Naphne he was in a league him. of his own. Naphne grabbed him and said, without you, we can't do this. And from that day on, he tried to top frag, but still couldn't because Shiro <laughs> is still, is still, still <laughs> the best player in the challenger stage. Uh, he's walking to the top of mid with that MP9 right now. He's about to make a little moolah. Or so he could have. Instead, we're going to get EG sprinting towards that A site. Please let us plant, they ask. But Axile's going to just rip them to shreds. Inters drops the bomb at the cross, and Cirque doubles back to his death. Hobbit is always over here. CT side, T side, doesn't really matter. Hobbit is up at the top of mid. Yes, he 12 is. 12-5 on this Dust 2 map. Yeah, we saw Hobbit do that uh, a lot versus Greyhound as yeah. well. Did you say that just now? or No. Nope. Oh, okay, okay. Just yeah. said... Tonight. Yeah, just tonight. But yeah, he's uh, he likes to get frisky. Hobbit, a big fan of Brazil. You know Hobbit's party hard, man. 
Yep. Mead and explosives. Automatic gets out. Flash not going to be too much of a deterrence. Hmm. Cotton actually smoked suicide here in flash top mid. There's no push. Just trying to kill some time off the clock. CT is trying to figure out how do they want to approach this, but no one from EG is inside a middle, and it looks like Anaphany's just got kind of hard vision here onto Xbox, and they haven't smoked Xbox off. So this might be a little bit too open for Cloud9. I feel like this is sort of missing right now. Ooh, Nealon misses an opportunity. He gets pushed out of position. I think the Xbox smoke being not there is just a, a core component of why so much pressure is going the way the CT side. Damn, Hobbit. Okay. There it is. ADAD <laughs> with the MP9, and uh, Nealon just can't win the duel despite having the AK. So smoke comes down eventually. Hex takes the place of his dead teammate. Hobbit going to fall back ever so slightly, but he's also got Shiro nearby, so he could be very well set up with the flash once the fire fades. Thing is, he's peeking into three Ts. The flash is real good, and Hobbit's going to bring Breeze down with him. Cirque able to get the trade frag, but it's man advantage. Axile fighting automatic down long, and Bomb stalls out towards middle. It's Naphany wasting no moment, instantly attacking them from the back. He draws them, though, as uh, he doesn't get the kill. It will go well towards long, and with seven seconds on the clock, Shiro's going to stuff Cirque. Hexed up oh next, boy. he's dead, and Cloud9 take 13. Yeah, they just got juggled back and forth, and... Um kind of Naphne knew exactly what was going to happen with all that and as soon as they, they lost log control they were happy to take Taz you can see Naphne on the right side of your screen just spotting into mid really taking advantage of the fact that they, there was no response to the mid pressure the first smoke that came down into suicide with no push behind it then they're just spotting holding cat no whopper comes through just a little bit too obvious for cloud nine maybe a worse team doesn't capitalize there but cloud nine are sharp right now Looking to hit the old classic go. Smoke on door shouldn't be too problematic if Hobbit decides to just run through it. Enters. Don't worry about it. He's got Hobbit already in line. And oh, smoke not on door. Excuse me. You know when A when S gets three there. Right. Yeah. Dirk. We keep trying to pound those deagle shots through, and it works. He'll find Naphne at the very least, but Hobbit racks up three frags. Cloud9, two away from victory on map one. Yes. Wow. I mean, they didn't smoke the door, but they found an even harder smoke to land. True. Yeah. It's it didn't help. It didn't help. It technically didn't hurt either, but it was funny. Okay. I like that. Overall positive yeah, based mentality. on these two things. Yeah. Poor Naphne. Apparently that's not through smoke. Interesting. Cirque. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, man. I was dude, Cirque is extremely fast, by the way. Um I know obviously Shiro is going Faster. crazy, but he just walked into an angle Cirque waiting for that peak. I mean, I don't think he takes Insane. a risk like that if it's 14-5, but the fact that he is faster than him doing that is just blowing my mind right now. I don't know, dude. Shiro is just operating on a different frequency. That is insane. Surf didn't do anything wrong. He didn't deserve that. Yeah. Yeah. You could say He's a just, good guy. You know, just click wall, but... He wasn't even on his screen for half a second. And Shiro just rails him with the headshot. No, this is in the point 0.1, you know, point 0.2 second range, right? Wild. I want that one slow-mo. Here we come off the catwalk. EG going to try to push their way in at the 35 second mark. Shiro gets blinded. Not going to stop him. We got a T getting closer, but Naphne's caught Hex and Hobbit stuffs the first one. Nealon can bring this back. He's having a bit of a slow game. And unfortunately, with all that pressure from Util, he just can't move it forward. Shiro's swapping guns. 
popping heads and giving Cloud9 10 map points. Yeah, it's just pure domination right now from Cloud9. I, th I think this demo is definitely worth watching. It's not one of those games where it's like, oh, oh we played badly and stuff. I mean, Cloud9 played extremely well and probably can show them a lot of stuff about what they can what they can fix. Um, but yeah, there's, there's some individual element here too as well. Shiro continues to have an unbelievable uh, game. So I can actually do the math on this. 60, 167 kills now in five maps. This 21 kill game is only game under 30 kills. <laughs> and that's a good thing because it means that there's other pieces of Cloud9 succeeding, right? Yeah. Hobbit's not far away from him. And this Axile is still and Inter's a, putting up some. And he was at a 0.99 KPR. This is 21 kills in 21 rounds, still maintaining that average. Insane. Yeah. He said highest rated player at this stage of the major, right? So far? Yeah, I mean, yeah. He has a 1.58 rating, I think, so far. Oh. EG just up against a little too much at the moment. Elon's going to try to again move in, but awkward once the smoke goes down, and Inters will clean that one up with absolute ease. It's Axile's chance now. Saw the gun barrel. Gets the bomb dropped in the distance, and Cirque, well, it's nothing but desperation. He's going to try to cross, and he doesn't even have the bomb, so dead man walking. Cloud9 with a world-class domination of evil geniuses here on Dust2. This may have been a team that was sent down to the 0-2 group, but after dispatching Imperial yesterday, it seems like EG are quick work. to play on it and uh, I think it's just there's no real big win in the veto of course that's no secret that's no surprise uh, so it's not it's not going to be easy just because it's their map pick and just looking at some of Cloud9's last games I mean they pick into technically their highest win rate map right now uh, the quality of teams is not that high but there, there, there is a loss to Liquid actually uh, they beat Furia and of course they beat Imperial just yesterday uh, which was a sight for sore eyes if you were a Cloud9 fan earlier this year. This one's quiet, man. This one's creepy. They got spotted by Nathanie's jump up, so now this player's on sight, high alert. Axile waits for the flash, pops out, gets hit by the second one, but so does EG. And now Axile's pinned in, stops the bomb, Cirque crosses over, Nathanie's dead, and Nealon's gonna bust through. Man advantage, EG. They clear out those corners. Inters gets instant dink. Cirque's tearing him up in this pistol. But we've got Shiro left. He sees automatic in the back, and it's Cirque with three in the pistol round for Evil Genius's T side kickoff. Damn. They make that happen on the walk up around Banana. Taking it pretty quickly, actually. And honestly, they try to brute force their way in. The aim from Cloud9 on some of these pistol rounds is already so nuts that it felt like, okay, they might be able to stop this, but this is what this is. Just. A raw aim battle from beginning to end um, and trying to keep it as simple as possible. No long, drawn out default, boring yawn emoji pistol round. Z, Z, Z. Exactly. Not about that life. You know, if I'm Cloud9 right now, I want to just be able to smash evil geniuses in back to back maps. Just kind of send a shiver down the spines of whoever the hell is left to play. There were chances to eliminate C9. They could have been gone yesterday. Double overtime. Back-to-back -back maps. Shiro, he's going to get himself one. Oh, Nafani Jesus. off the 5-7 with a couple. This shouldn't be a 2v2, and yet here we are. Oh, God. Okay, so quickly, it's about picking up better guns with the sight down and all of the nades. Look how many smokes are on the ground in the B site. The real tough part about overpass is how long it takes to get back to the other side of the map, especially if you're a little insecure about what could be going on inside of um, Connector. So... It benefits Cloud9 just to chill for a second, especially if the re-aggression could take place. And then it also 
benefits them to uh, think about trying to pick up some utility as well. And for EG, at least they've got Hexed, who has made his way up forward towards the A site, and Neelan will join them soon. So, honestly, at this point, right now, it looks like it, the round is going to be completely fine for EG. They don't have a smoke to use, but they won't need it. There's no gamble in place here for Cloud9, and they are just trying. They're just trying to believe that it's going to come back to B eventually. Unfortunately for them, sad reality. Not going to happen. So ultimately, save that AK. Maybe the scout can find something else. I'm not quite sure what other weapons were dropped on the forefront of the B site. Well, they're planning for CD spawn. Yeah, Hex getting real deep, but. Again, assuming C9 won't even throw an attempt at this, what are wrong? They're playing some close fights here, so it looks like, I mean, Hex has a good fight here, but we'll see if Nap clears this properly. Well, that's well done on that shot. Exile, gonna need to be a nice shot. He will hit it. Hex takes one of the chest, but survives as two players of EG secure that second. And we're gonna have to watch C9 just sit back a second. Yeah, good recovery. Um, there was an investment there. Some good pistols and everything with armored players. So sustained losses is one thing, but they win the round and they keep two. Hex giving the Mac 10 and a chance to run rampant on this one. EG. Whew. Overpass T side can be a daunting task. Kicking off with pistol, not bad. We're going to get that long stack. Breeze about to round the corner. Lots of USPs looking right oh, at him. The they get that first. bomb down. Things could get weird here. Flash finds its target. Axile's coming through. Neelan's dropped to 45. And the bomb goes farther in. Only pistols. Shiro trying to extend that arm for an AK, but he just can't grab it. Oh, x Mac 10 oh, also boy. dies. Neelan's trying to recover. And sure enough, three headshots, but it's low health on the last two. And evil geniuses clenching as they tried to come around that corner. Damn, that got hairier and hairier. Of course, I, the, the core mechanic of this game is the fact that the bomb drops whichever direction you're facing, no matter what momentum you have. So you could be strafing to the left, you're looking forward, the bomb goes farther, and it just goes farther and farther out with each kill, which gets scary. But then they have the MAC-10 jump out first with the triple swing and just believe in the aim. And at the end of the day, they're going up against USPs. So it's, it's costly in back-to-back -back rounds, so... That's one thing. Automatic still actually has some left over, which is kind of nice, but not a perfect start here for EG. They'll be happy to have three T rounds, however. Let's just not let that happen again. Or, ow. I mean, ew. Two players walk out through monster smoke. That could not have been any easier for Inters. Yeah. That we saw a similar round, I think, where Imperial got one over on Inters by finding a timing to walk through the smoke. So this could have been completely clock-based, based on when he thought a smoke would be refreshed, for example. So we just see the end of Monster get refreshed. If it's a couple seconds too, Inters will pull a smoke out and throw it. Mm -hmm. And so they might have been playing off that specific timing. In this instance, of course, the smoke is getting refreshed by somebody else, and Inters is just here watching. You'll see Nafany sometimes in CT spawn have lineups for the back monster smoke and also throws a lot of supporting utility and juggles it while he rotates back and forth between sites. And maybe that's something they cleaned up. That's a really cool angle. Oof. Oh, Shiro, he had an op fully right there. All right. That was, I heard like three, four bullets popped out by Hex. So nice duel. That must have come all the way from those tunnels into Playground. That was probably a beautiful kill from Hex. Yeah, yeah. But alas, Axile takes the place of Shiro, grabs his AWP, and on the fallback, we'll find Cirk standing in the open by the fountain. Cloud9 take their first round win the moment they've got guns. And it's Inters who primes them with a nice, easy two-piece to start. Yeah, so probably. Like, uh, I was talking to Anders about this earlier, but people don't really just do haphazard run through smoke strats anymore. Like, e almost everything is clock based in CS, in fact, uh, these days when it comes to what you try to do based on what you think the other team is going to try to do. So I don't think that was completely random, but uh, Cloud9 were absolutely more ready than they were last time. And it's going to send EG back down out of the pistols with one AK for automatic. How nice of Neelan to invest in him. Can we 
yeah, we just see we see all that damage now amount to this round. With the majority deaths and back to back. And the first AK goes down. Irretrievable. Yeah, 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 the only AK. Unless they stop watching it, but Hobbit's got eyes on the tunnels, so it's not looking like Inters wants to put himself back in that awkward spot. Hex jumps beyond. Hobbit sees this movement, so he's gonna be a little concerned about that one. Neelan does get the AK in the end. Maybe they want them to. But he walks right through that. Nice flashbang. This time it works. Neelan looking for another, but instead decides to play it a little tempered here. Falls away. Hell. Considering he didn't have Kevlar, they had that one flash. It works. It's yeah. enough to get the gun back. It's enough to make this round still somewhat possible when after losing automatic at the start, you'd think it's done. Yeah, and now they're getting close up into the bathrooms and grouped up as well. And Neelan, full health, fresh face here with the AK. I'll look to try to make a round of it. Forward they go. Then, long player serves up the distraction for Axile to swing. Breeze's Deke finds its mark. Oh, oh! Times two. But time? Oh, just enough. Interesting. Breeze incredibly low. Cirque now onto the AK. Hobbit seems to know he's locked in. Flash finds Breeze blind for a second. Hobbit looks to come up. Breeze is worried about Bank, but he needs to focus in. Oh. Hobbit's going to finish that. They've lost track of Cirque. He slides out and ties out to Hobbit, who just comes through with the two critical kills. But honestly, congrats, EG. You make something when you've already lost automatic at the start from a 4v5 with no guns yeah. to Nealon rocking it back into that A site and yep. Breeze hitting big. And a one one flash. These is a node flash, nose flash to get back the AK and turn it into a kill and get out of there too. Yeah. So I that could have been. I was thinking maybe they don't worry about the AK because, well, maybe there's someone in the corner, but also maybe because if EG take too long to go and get this back, all they do is go to the site that could be stacked more and then not have enough time to get back to A. Um, but that was the best case situation. A little bit of revenge, but another kind of half buy here. Still suffering from those early losses in the first, the second and third round. A lot of jump spots on this map. Mm -hmm. So over has, I mean, feel like there's more more jump spots on this map than all the others. Yeah, they definitely did something where they tried to make a lot of jump spots, and then they also tried to do the designated boosts. That was the thing sure. they tried to do when they added overpass for the first time, like putting wood walls and stuff. It was a response to how in this game everything is wall bangable, but like nothing is consistent. So they tried to with use overpass to like show how it could be obvious. Okay. Um, Hence the gaps down on that B site. Yeah, 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 exactly. I think my favorite thing about Overpass is still just the open skybox, the ability to nade from B to A and vice versa. True. Yeah. There are redeeming qualities here. It's a good map. All I right? just hate it. It needs to be replaced, but... <laughs> no, 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 not replaced. It, it needs to, I think it just needs to be updated a little bit. Updated a little bit. Updated a little bit. That's not how we work here. We do ultimatums. <laughs> okay, yeah. You're either in or you're out. Yeah. Well, man, looking at the first version of Overpass versus this one, that's two different maps entirely. I just think ops, ops on CT side and some of the long ranges with the uh, M4s are a bit too strong. Yeah. Tough. And it can just feel like it, it takes a long time to get to the A site. There's, there's probably ways that they can fix that a little bit. I also think long A, a little bit uninspired, a tree and a rock. What is this, rust? It's miles across, yeah, and you can't even build. Yet. And there's no proximity chat. <laughs> Bring back halftime chat. <laughs> Buy up from EG. All right, they had to... Took their whooping in the last two rounds, but now we get the guns back in, and Bree's going to keep jumping, peeking, spotting, and Cloud9, well, no real need to press forward on this A site. We haven't seen that from them. They're going to leave the solo Axile long, and... Hang on to this early B stack for quite some time. Lots of action happening over the years towards long. Whether it's the T scaling or the ops. Trying to find easy shots back. Wow, that's unfortunate. I mean, it is off the right timing as Hex is trying to make the most of the smoke in the doorway. 
blown off the hinges by the CTs, of course. Exile content to just keep moving around here. He's got support now behind him. Was long alone, now bathrooms with two in sight. So we have long control here for EG. They've got an attack come form forming outside of Banana as well, and the short control over on B. It's not too bad, still 35 seconds as well. Three CTs here, but it gets a little claustrophobic. There might be a chance here. There's actually no smokes for Cloud9 to defend on the site. This volley can mean a lot from Breeze. Yeah, Shiro's holding on to one in order to answer. Exec starts to come over top, but man, EG have left this down to the wire. Breeze, he did crack open this site last time, but Cirque's not posted, and nafani has got himself another. Cirque will finally get a trade back the way of EG. Eight seconds, desperate, and no HP left over. They get hard stuffed on the front of that one by Cloud9's IGL. Yeah, and they use those flashes defensively, in a sense. I mean, they peaked on long, but they kept interrupting the exec as was coming in, and... Of course, the more time that bleeds off the clock, the more obvious that, you know, something has to happen. This is the first peak. There's no refrag because the flash also blinds the guy in the back because you can't play anti when you're attacking. And it, it allows everybody to take really, really good fights right there. So well done in the utility usage from Cloud9. I actually thought that the attack was shaping up pretty well. And I don't think they were uh, running out of time. But of course, it might have become a little bit obvious for Cloud9. But they get that Optimus Molly in and they flash and interrupt C9's flashes and make them feel like the attack is happening any second and they can't counter flash, then maybe they have something. Right away into uh, money problems again here for EG. I am just going to check on the other game, a stream game, just to see if an update. And Furia. Furia! Oh, Furia 1.16.9 on map one. Okay. What about map two? It hasn't started, I think. Ah, okay. Well, maybe we'll have time to catch it. Yeah. If things continue this way, because, I mean, we've got Axile at the top. Let me, uh, I'm, I'm going to repeat that sentence, folks. We've got Axile at the top of the scoreboard. Shiro nowhere to be found. He's buried beneath Nafani and Hobbit, and that is actually such a nice thing to see. Mm -hmm. For the first time, it's not Shiro just trying to drag Cloud9 into victory lane. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday. You know, Simple and Shiro are simple and electronic on the A side of Overpass. And of course now Bit is electronic on the A side of Overpass, but for many, many years. Now well, this round's supposed to go down easy, but Axile's been hit up from Long and Bathroom, so they know that the Desert Eagles are getting dangerously closer. And because we're only seven rounds through, there's oh. still plenty of time for this man on your screen to get back to where he belongs at the top. They got Let's the flank coming scoreboard. in though. Yeah. Hobbit with a ton of info here, just piecing it all together. And Hobbit's flanks on Dust2 were so good. Perfectly timed over and over. He's going to come at this. Two frags with the SMG. And those unarmored Desert Eagles, as you'd expect, go down with nothing to fight back with. Let's see what the buy has in store for us. EG, elimination is on the line. Of course, this is a 1-2 matchup, not the place you expected to find Cloud9. Maybe even not the place you expected to find EG based on uh, kind of how good they were getting. It and actually seemed they were getting good with Thorborg behind them, Nealon getting picked up. They had incredibly good seeding. Opening match versus IHC, follow-up game versus 9Z. True. That could have been them just put 2-0. That's really, you yeah, know? That's a great thing to point out. So, of all the, you know, unexpected yeah. teams to move on, they, they can't be the mad best. about getting this as their draw when they already had a couple yep. of, yeah. What's even wilder is to think that this is an evil genius is that if we go back to the RR, oh! Automatic, hold on. Ooh, and a dink. He finds the headshot. Hobbit puts out his own molly, thanks to that smoke, and then able to pull away. But this was an EG that uh, nearly had a chance at beating Cla uh, Excuse me, Liquid. They would have been legends themselves. EG was not far off from that. Yeah. And then we'd be looking at, you know, Team Liquid down here tearing it up. Nice shot. I can say that. I can joke about Shiro missing because... You, you don't get many chances to. Sure. You know. Get your jabs in when you can, yep. you know? That's, uh... That's what the 
people want. Automatic, eight health. If only he had a little more for this expedition ahead of the bomb. But he's got Inters and Nafany right here. Inters waiting as Nafany makes a bit of sound on the walk away. Now Inters is a super high alert. Second flash oh, comes second out. second flash. That one's killer, but Cirque actually never got blinded by it and peeks out to support. They take a player off site. We've got everything from Cloud9 that's left inside B. Nealon alleviates a little pressure by dropping Hobbit. Nafany and Shiro gonna have to do it all with four players ahead of them. And Cirque just expecting that walk up. Shiro dives around the corner, but EG just easily come into this B bomb site. And even with those flashes popping on Monster, mm -hmm. it's Cirque that gives the cover. Yes, it's that's super well done. I mean, it was a very tricky tactic with the way they approached it. First flash, MT just to listen. As soon as they heard someone shooting back, they decided to go full swing and throw another flash in there. Cirque hadn't gotten to that point yet of uh, being able to be blind. And um, they also, I mean, this is also a symptom of Cloud9 giving up a significant amount of map control. They're almost never fighting for short. On A, they're really comfortable just sitting on the site. They haven't really fought for that either. And I think because they're so good, it's been okay for them. But great to see that EG with a significant amount of map control can press that advantage and take one over the line. So they keep this one close. It's the first kind of full rifle, of course, that they win over Cloud9. But a good one nonetheless. Felt like that one really could have been. But Axile... Yeah, this is because we said nice things about Axile. Yeah. Cirque again, right? Critical kill getting inters. Neil and just jumping in the corner trying to get away from that fight. Save me, save me! That's not what he sounds like, man. Not at all. <laughs> if we are talking about EG's players, though, I do want to say that Hex reminds me of Twists before Twists had his glow up. Mm. You know, and, and Hex is still younger. He's got some time to find himself. Twist is kind of a machine, though. I don't know how many people can do that. Right? He's, he's That's fair. Twist is the guy in the gym at 5 a.m. on match day doing core. Oh, oh. Absolute psycho. Some people say leg day. Twist says every day. Every day. Down into the connector to make sure it's clear. And sure enough, Cloud9 nowhere to be found here. Leading back 2 and A, 2 and B. And Nafany just floating around graffiti. So variation in the setup. Inter's pressing in close. Maybe next time these flashes will actually have a peak behind them and not just allow evil geniuses to get close to the site. We'll see if Cloud9 want to disallow such activities. Thirty seconds though, man. EG playing with Father Time. Shiro's not able to track that one. Smoke in the front of it. And Axile's trying to focus in on bathrooms. We'll find Breeze for free. Good amount of damage there versus Nealon. Nafany sits back, waits, lines them up, takes down one, and great cover by Cirque. Back-to-back -back rounds, he hits hard. Shiro connects, hexed up next. Nine HP, bomb denied as Hobbit comes through smoke to oh. make sure Cloud9 grabbed their that six. That was a decent fight, but because they held that smoke for so long, they were able to one way on top of the site. Breeze wanted to try to help, but he had to take a bad fight and he knew it. Peeking out of bathrooms to help uh, support the long push, and they don't trade effectively here. Lots of damage done by Axel as he gets some off, and then he falls as well. And that's where his smoke is, continues to be useful, even at that point, to defend Shiro and block his vision off, and the other rotator who got off into the corner of CT spawn. So that's one lost. Uh, certainly a buy. It's just what kind. I don't know if that's presumptuous of me, but, it, you know. No, you're right. Yeah. Meelan might be limited, but, again, investment nonetheless. Oh, Cirque gets an op. Okay, gets the op half armor. And, again, this has always been a map that Cirque loves. Loves to play for sure. And he should have a great time on CT side as well. Now it's the hard part. Offense undergoing. Oh, 
Damn it, Naphany. Oh, I actually did a whole demo on Naphany figuring out how to spam people all round long. Dude, he is so annoying from that position. I feel like Hex has been getting bullied as well, right? Think about the crosses on mid doors last map. Shiro's mm -hmm. just hitting him every single time, essentially, either with the straight up kill or just through the walls. Now he's getting spammed down in connectors. So another round where Hex just has to sit on the sideline and we'll see if EG's investment can bounce back from a 4v5. Being given space to get closer to A. We saw that cost Cloud9 around at the B site, but it feels like every time they start to hit A, the position's still just rock solid from C9. It's Axile and Shiro. Deadly combination. Not every day in Rio, but certainly this evening. Very safe jump spot here, and Shiro has his angle cut off. And that's why Axel didn't have to be too aggressive with it. And this front side smoke's so important. And again, it's late, right? And when the smoke comes down this late, it's it's been EG who have had so much trouble with this. Oh, Inters giving them an opportunity now, but they're too far away to organize. And it looks like, yeah, Hobbit's already set the site. Yeah, puts ah. down the fire, make sure nobody can run in, even if they wanted to throw that Hail Mary. Listen, so. it's hard to draw out utility. It is. It's hard to count grenades, but... Um, it's been a consistent problem for EG in not being able to kind of get to the A site without some really important smoke going down and dashing their hopes. Why do players write dot no clip in chat? It's a bind that they've they've like double bound to like another key. Okay. So they accidentally push it. Like sometimes I press, like if I alt tab, it writes exclamation R because of KZ. That right. I just have that. It's just a easy button, but. Makes sense. Yeah. But uh, regular no clip wouldn't write anything in chat, but it's just the ESEA no clip. That's the dot no clip. You can also dot sonic. A sonic? On client and plays a song. Huh. And it's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Here's that Naphany wall bang into Hex, who was just trying to work his way around in connector. There was nothing here. He even stepped back, waited for a second, and then walked into that stream of damage. Mm. So uh, he'll be regretting holding W. Hands off the keyboard and he lives. Buyback in from EG. It's very limited on utility. So if we're already criticizing their inability to draw out nades, doesn't seem like it's going to get any easier. Cloud9 to the four-man B stack straight away. Oh, the bomb is back here. This is kind of risky, but Breeze should be in a good spot. We'll see. He's going to get interfered with, for sure. Meanwhile, going for the boost. Naphany looking for the wall bang again. Jump spotting point blank. If he puts his head right in the crosshair, automatic. Instead, pressures Shiro on the silo. And Cirque will fall back. Both teams kind of disengaging from that setup. Felt like a really good chance for EG to clip a kill, but not going to happen. Axile starts to press in outside the bathrooms. He's got two players on the other end of that, and he just locks into the side. Cirque waiting to punish something from the site. Sound made. Axile knows it. Hex keeps eyes as this fades. And with that flash, Axile continues to try and pry away at this mid setup. Now, he's not going to see anything there. So they start to shuffle back down to the B site. Evil Genius is looking to get in here. Good placement on the spam. It's Inter's down by a third. And five players from EG now starting to rock that boat back up to the A site again, always leaving it down to the wire. They're going to scramble inwards, and it's going to leave Naphany entirely on his own. He's got teammates running up, trying to help. What can Naphany do while he's here alone? Neelan goes down with his back turned. Axile shows up, and Inter's flash. It oh. is perfection. Automatic stuck in the bathrooms, and as EG scramble, they get just absolutely splattered on the front end of that A site. Ooh, yeah, calling a little bit ah, too slow right now. They couldn't get back to the site. This round, they actually do draw out the utility. Naphne's there with no nades le left over. There's actually no one else on the site with him. That supporting flash from Inters was great. The shots that he hit were fantastic as well. And the support was there kind of just in time to help out after he did the first kill. If he died right away, then actually rotation in might have been more difficult. So 
credit to Naphne on an individual level, but this is a real desperate run back up to the stairs. They clearly wanted to go B, then they realized how bad of an idea it was as they heard so much information. But yeah, that one's that one's playing from behind almost every single point of the round. Uh oh, not again. Solo AK for automatic, we've seen it. C9 yet to feel it. Hobbit's gonna find the opener. The CT side continues to just tear through EG's hopes. They got the three rounds at the start of the half. The anomaly in round nine is their fourth. The Deagle's just not enough. Yeah, you gotta assume. It does feel like it. You know, as this series came through, I believe it was Yanko who said, you know, it's crazy that Evil Genius' best chance at winning a map in this series comes down to Cloud9's map pick of Dust2. We get on to Overpass, and yeah, I see what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah it's tough when you have to pick into other strengths. Lonely AK changes hands. Fall to the 30-second mark yet again. And this time, it's just going to be that desperate little B hit. With Hobbit deep on the right, Inter's on the wall, and Shiro in the sight. All the layers are here for Cloud9 to just easily rack up a ninth win. And with it, they shall. Mm. Not a single player drops to C9. And again, this defense is just rock solid. It is, yeah. We talk, we talk about this as a pistol round, two conversions, and one rifle round win here for EG um, on this T side. But hey, could have been worse. You could be a fanatic getting 50 node. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Happened earlier today. That is fair. Silver linings. I don't think it feels much better. Because at least fanatic can play tomorrow. True. EG. Good point. Brink of elimination. Seven rounds away from watching Cloud9 move forward with their dreams alive and EG. Nothing left to play for. Smoke at the front end of the monster goes too deep. Cirque was just given a chance to hit one in the knees. But that's Inter's laying down more utility just to make sure he survives. See how well they can play off this information. And again, the tough part about overpass is beating the clock. Map feels massive sometimes. At least they've got con control. Bomb does take the long way around. And they're going to try to organize again for another A attack. I think this one almost certainly ends here. Bomb is out towards long. And now a more classic position with Axel uh, rifling long. And they're, they're flashing to check this. They get the bomb. Ooh, 40 seconds and they see the bomb. And now Axel just wants to get out of here. Now Breeze is really close, however. Nice shot. So that's something. And it seems like he must have known about Shiro as well. Maybe not. Little adjustment needed for that one, and he still hits the headshot, so it's desperate, but they all have been. Essentially, EG just pressing into his sight with mere seconds to spare. Shiro's 5-7, good. Naphne in from the corner with one. We've got another player there. It's constantly Hobbit, who just throws himself into the mix the moment EG look like they have a damn chance, and then he slides smoothly wide to give Cloud9 their 10th. Yeah, that was a clean one right there. I mean, Attack came in because it kind of had to exile sees him. Gets that op down. The flash retake is so perfectly timed as well. It's kind of like early pressure over towards B. Nothing goes down. T9 go, okay. Don't think you're going to try that walkthrough you did like last in the beginning of the game. Maybe it's going to be the A site. They check on the A site. They're right about it. They throw a late smoke. They peek something and it's, it's all done. Top fragger on EG right now. Cirque with eight kills. Definitely been a problem. But hey, everyone looks good on CT side. And EG have that coming up next. Let's see if they can get five here. Yeah, fifth one could bode well, but then they're still going to have the problem of cooling off Axile, who's held on to the top of the board for C9. Naphany and Hobbit, the two players who yesterday were able to keep those numbers up. You know, Hobbit, I think, did his job in order to just keep C9 afloat. And that did give time for Axile to crank it up a notch. But it's just the one from Axile here in round 15. So, yes, there is a chance until Shiro shows up. 
Hexed, hit by that, sitting on 59. Plenty more time than usual from EG as they do get footing on the bomb site. Shiro's gonna get caught off, but he's still standing. What? Somehow still alive with two HP. Automatic's gonna have to come in for the 1v4 and down Heaveny in second. Hobbit yet again consistent and never dying four deaths across the first 15 rounds of play. Mm -hmm. And now EG are gonna have to do something miraculous if they want to continue to compete here at Rio. It's a tough job, but no one ever said it would be easy. Time to find out what they've got left in the tank. Already outside the B site, Cloud9 posturing and doing so silently. Letting Hobbit inch his way closer on the short side. Of course, the setup here from EG is Breeze and Hexed up front. One man on Graffiti and another in the heavens. So in terms of numbers, EG, they could stop this. But it's not always about the numbers. It's about, about the form. And the form of Cloud9 right now is just so undeniable. Here comes the commitment. Off the back of the utility, Hobbit insta-pops Breeze. Oh, Naphany wow. saves Axile as him and Hexed were so close, Cirque gets something going, but Inters tears through two. Jesus. And with a pistol round win, it is nothing but desperation. That's the kind of strat that if I was like, if I was calling for a team, I would just copy that from beginning to end. It's kind of like, could the only way to kind of counter this is obviously Hobbit gets clipped while he's kind of peeking off a short, trying to draw any utility they may have, or a big flank comes in, which is obviously something that's going to happen less often. And, uh, yeah, they had basically a dry run from beginning to end. The perfect flash on the attack, the opening kill from Hobbit as they were throwing their Molotov. And so it looked like that peak was a little early, and then they just ran over the site entirely. And that's just way too hard to deal with with those pistols. So very clean execution. Makes you feel like pistol rounds are real CS. Sometimes. There's a small argument for it. Yeah. I think pistol rounds with utility. That's real CS. Here's actually something I was thinking about. Pistol rounds, yep. okay, $800, mm -hmm. same starting pistols, Okay. but you spawn with Kevlar. Ooh. So you can all buy utility or upgrade your pistols. But if you have Kevlar, then you can still buy the helmet. You want helmets and pistol rounds? You can still buy the helmet. Right, because it would cost 350 to get the upgraded armor yep. if you already have the chest piece. Yep. So that's something to consider. Yeah. Unless we just disable helmets in the pistol round. Giving you the X, give, you know, giving you the asterisk. Here. Yeah, yeah. It kind of. But I do like the idea. I, I, I just kind of sick. Just so that, you know, you could buy, everyone would buy nades. Everyone would buy nades. Even if you upgraded a gun, you could buy nades. And then you just have like a. And mind you, even if there are helmets, there's also more upgraded pistols. There's more upgraded pistols. So. And this way, if it's still 800 that you start with, you don't affect the economy moving forward for the rest. You don't give people more money to buy things. Essentially, we'll just never see Glocks again. Yeah, that would be a problem. Or not. Neelan, 5-7 at the ready. <laughs> Naphany just crawls beneath him. Blah, 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 blah. And then we've got a man advantage with an open A site to run forward. Shiro actually sticks around, not leaving Axile on his own. Who's then tasked with turning on to Breeze and getting a comfortable 5v2 going. Cirque misses the one shot. He, dude, is it just me? Or did Cloud9 just figure out every single position? I know. Yeah. It, it, they yeah. clear the close wall. Shiro goes back for the front side. Yeah. Axile turns around to deal with the flank, and then they go find a kill on long. Yes. It's like they're it's like they're bloodhounds. Yeah. And they just found every single kill. Yes. They What is that? They just exploded on everything correctly. Like professional Splatoon players. Is that a thing? A uh, professional Splatoon players, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, everything is an esport. Good for them. I Good bet even them. Slither IO is an esport. I suppose. Nah, not on those laggy ass servers. I don't know, man. If Overwatch can be. <laughs> Terrorists win. <laughs> <laughs> Kick them all, they're down. It's great because you're not really angering anyone. No. When you say it. So. That's true. There's no one plays. I'm just kidding, guys. Poor EG, man. We're just kidding. They had a little half by. They thought maybe they could cause an upset. Maybe they could just suddenly uppercut C9 without them seeing it. But instead, it's going to have to be nothing but pistols here in round 18. A 14-4 score for EG to maybe improve on.
but the thought of them coming back from this is just, well, I'll say it, unbelievable. They'll have to prove us all wrong, because right now it's nothing but a powered up Cloud9. This is not the C9 Ooh, that lost the Fnatic, nor to Greyhound. This is the C9 that all their fans would hope to show up here in Rio. Wow. This is the C9 that wins in Dallas. And the one that, of course, can run from now a struggle at the start of the Challenger stage to the potential playoffs and legends. That's where we set expectations if they can continue to replicate nights like these. Yeah, they're not even defaulting here. They're going for their pop flash explodes. They did the same thing on A last round. It's fun to watch. It's easier CS and uh, Cloud9 not really extending the respect here to Cloud9, or sorry, to EG of, of really going slow and going through all the motions. Um, I think they really believe that they have won this game and they're playing like it, and that's always a good place to be. EG will have to earn their respect, of course. And that can start right here where they've got a real buy going on. Should feel like a last stand. Oh, Breeze shooting back through that smoke. Punished. Yeah, and that's obviously an unfair fight in favor of the T side. Axel can be anywhere, and Breeze is always going to be in this kind of small radius in front of the tunnel. Yeah, reduced to a pocket. Yeah. You saw Inters get shot in the first half and actually just fall out without even shooting back because of how much more valuable his life is as a CT. I don't even know if Breeze shot back, though, to be fair. Oh, circle shoot and find his target. Nafany taken to 16. Now, this might be an interesting spot for Hex to get to, because could they expect him to be up here? Ah, Axile swings, though. Shooting sharp. Nice drive-by by Hobbit, but he's blind. <laughs> and he regains vision just in the nick of time. Automatic throws himself through the fire. He's going to shoot Hobbit in the back. Shiro answers, and we've got a 1v1, folks, to close out 15 to Cloud9. And we talk about Shiro and his clutch. Cirque. Oh, you read this correctly. He walks out. You know, Cirque is walking out, but can he get to the right spot? Oh, just gets around, Ooh. and Cirque hits the shot, just like he did up towards that A site. It's a critical kill for Cirque. It's a very important round. It's EG's fifth, at least. Wonder if Cirque um, had to flick there if he was clearing around the pole. Looked like a hard shot. Went through the wall as well, but it's well done from Cirque. Oh, okay, he just stayed unscoped and kept an eye on it. Won't be match points at this moment. Some good trades here throughout the round for evil geniuses. The attack came on heavy and fast. Cirque, the first of his teammates to touch 10 kills. And again, you know these kills would rise throughout the CT side if they got a chance to play it, but. It's just so close to a loss already. Yeah. And Cloud9 coming into this one with better guns than the last. Neelan's priming a flash. Automatic walking back, doesn't want to go around that corner, and Hobbit, not going to shy away from a gunfight. Nafany's up next, kneeling on the retreat, throwing utility as he falls away from that front fight. A little indecisive, I feel like, and... Right? It felt like they wanted the they peak, wanted and then the they peak, didn't. But they couldn't decide when a good opportunity would be, and it's because Cloud9 did that Furio walk-up, just coming down banana, no flash for mid, waited out the utility, and that's what they've been doing. That seems to be working out very well. So just not giving any audibles, grouping up and exploding. Ooh, but talking about audibles, Breeze just hears that movement. Nobody's watching flank here. Breeze thinking about coming around the corner. Strikes down one. Kneeling from the site gets another. And that's perfect. Breeze has a little killer instinct. It's going to fall onto Axile and Inters instead. They could keep this simple. Double up on long, try to press into the site. But they're also operating in the dark. Oh, Neelan. that's options open. Neelan, it's 2v3 still. I mean, this isn't... Oh, man, Breeze start running. Oh, Breeze dies. Breeze. A 2v4 turned into the even keel. There's another flank up from Cirque. Axile watching, but Cirque hits One a hell. critical shot. And Inter is going to swap out to the off. That's the save call made. Cirque comes in big back-to-back -back rounds. Yeah, that was needed. They didn't necessarily have to hunt in this position because it's too hard to get to B if they have uh, con control and they could have uh, overstacked the A site with their extra player if they ran back. Um, but based on the clock, it, it's all good.
EG live another day, but Cloud9 have done so well with their money they can buy despite losing these last two rounds. <laughs> these are the highlights. Just smothered on that flank. Yeah. You know, Breeze hit the first one on the dot, but... Sketchy situation there. Uh -oh. Automatic. Did he not get spotted? I don't know. Pop it. Flash is Ooh. great. Perfect from Cirque. This time, no hesitation. Mm -hmm. Straight at the action. Automatic comes in big with two kills and falls away as well. Safely, may I add. So, EG putting up a fight so far on this defense. Cirque's the reason they're still in it. That's for damn sure. But now Automatic's been given a chance to succeed. And in round 21, he does so smoothly. Falls back into the bathrooms. They are, of course, here going to try and go for this. Cirque with a good angle here. Takes Inters down. It's one of the last chances they'll have to pull this back. Oh, wow. Weird shot missed here from Shiro. Uh, opponent looks to the side. And I don't know. It might have only led them to death faster because there was still Breeze tucked on the right side. Probably would have forgot about him. Axel burning up. They can keep two alive, then maybe they buy around this one in the follow-up. But yeah. uh, EG, rock solid defense off of Automatic's push. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes the best defense is a good offense, and I think Automatic embodies that here in round one. So things start to look a little bit better. And even though C9 saved this time, they can't get a full buy. done well to get these last two tries and so this game starts to become a little bit more real for EG we're still in the kind of let's get some dignity rounds phase of this comeback yeah once they cross 10 then I think we're talking about all right why shouldn't they be able to do the whole thing but a few clean attacks from uh, cloud nine made it look very scary the prospect of uh, believing in in the idea of a comeback but Cloud9 do have, you know, significant T side problems. They have 38% in their last five maps that have really run their course as well. I mean, looking like an average of 14 rounds played, some of these going to overtime. But they brought some new stuff. They didn't really try any of those um, contact explodes versus Imperial yesterday already. So they've given they've given overpass some thought. That pistol round also was pretty fresh. Daphne not gonna let off the pressure I, instantly into the short water. I think they're running the pistol round actually. Okay, let's see it. It worked very well. One may call it. Game music is on. Shiro. Find an angle here. Late smoke comes down again. They're just hoping that there's not going to be a flank. It isn't. It's one position that's slightly different. They're doubled up on short on this round, but readying similar utility. Flashes that pop perfectly. Axile pressing in. Naphne's got the only other kill so far for Cloud9. And Breeze hangs on to the wood wall. He's waiting. Flash meant for Axile. Oh, oh. Neil, it gets wrecked in the backdrop. Breeze comes in and okay. Automatic once again offering some help here. So sure enough, EG, the defense lives on. Hell yeah. I mean, clean shots from Breeze. Uh, clean shots both ways, but a couple extra here for Evil Geniuses. They gave up a good amount of map control there. They waited. The attack came in. They could trust it. They dodged. They ate a couple of flashes, but they dodged enough, and they had three players in the site. Plus, they got their molly off versus Monster. So that helps out a ton. But yeah, you can see they're, they're, almost, they're rarely kind of defaulting. They're, they're almost always crawling up into some kind of set execution, which is not their usual style. 
Cirque's gonna land the sitter. Axile's dead already as well. And this one's just gonna get chewed up, spat out, and easily digested. Although if you spit it out, I guess you don't digest it, but you get the you get you get the gist of it. It's an easy one for EG. Back to back to back to back. The defense just ever since that pistol loss and the two follow-ups has been all good. Inters tries he might with the deke. Just can't best Cirque. Three kills for him. And now EG just five rounds away. So Yeah, they might have been having that conversation like, let's just get like one or two more T rounds because they really believe in their own CT side. And uh, they're they're kind of showing why they felt comfortable picking this map. Still only nine. Guns back in. Whoa, not far off. Kneeling, nearly, nearly finding Axile again through smoke. That's what happened last round when he didn't have a gun. Axile's still up there, 25 kills. Hobbit, second for C9. It's automatic at the top of connector, and Naphany's just now starting to work around on Hardy oh, Axile. Man. That's a big scalp to take. Breeze has been decent, but automatic can also offer a little hope here to EG. They sort of dislodged the support, so Axile, he might get re-aggressed upon, and it looks like Hex is trying to help him. This is such a good move by them. They needed to support Automatic in some way, either by the top of bathrooms or down and short, and they find one of those avenues. Hobbit gonna try his hand at yeah. something sneaky, sees Automatic, shoots him in the fingers, and it's gonna take him to 73, but Hobbit's thinking maybe? No, I thought... He'd be tunnel visioned on the right side, sees automatic in the corner, and with that, all of a sudden, it's nothing but sight control for evil geniuses. Although 35 seconds is not a lot to work with. Cloud9, what's your move? Yeah. Now it's it looks like it's time for Cirque. There's still an offer Shiro. Not sure if these two are gonna go head to head. 25 seconds and they'll have to scale fast. Two players here from the CT side with the op as well, and they'll see a final target. This should help call over Hexed. Ooh, but Inter is now up the left side. Almost draws Cirque too far into Ooh. the open, but he gets himself all three. From inside that bomb site, you said it's Cirque's turn. Well, he delivers, spins them back the other way, and gives EG double digits. This comeback now is real. Yeah, those are some money moves from Cirque, and three shots, three punishes, and no time to shoot back. And even that out up on Shiro after that, you know, kind of insane one. That Shiro got on him walking across mid doors on Dust 2. It's a bit of revenge. So within four now, looking to expose Cloud9 for their follies on T side. Despite having early success, even versus rifles and that sweet pistol, some of these set executions, it feels like their novelty has worn off. Still very dangerous territory for EG. Cloud9 will take three, a third timeout. Groove will get in the mix. He's like, why aren't you guys defaulting, huh? What, are you scared of him? But this is the good move of the round from yes. Hex. Now, Hex talked about playing scared, and you're going to do it. I mean, you're scared, you're, you're playing scary teams. You can be good, but of course, you don't have the experience of you're, you're going to play scared, you're going to regret it. I think people do it, you know, years into playing as very good players. So no shame in that. But that's a, a, a moment where he just plays well, doesn't overthink the situation, helps his teammate in automatic, and gets a kill at the same time. Yeah, had to do something. Took it onto his own hands and delivers. So don't forget Cloud9 have the individuals to just rob a round away. And with that, they'll at least get OT secured. Automatic left on his own. Don't blame him for wanting to get out of there. Could have been more than just Hobbit behind that smoke. But in this case, it is just him. And no aggression into the water, despite door off its hinges. So C9, going to be given a lot of a lot of real estate. With the double smokes and the Molotov as well, if they're given enough posturing spots to just go for this yeah. full-blown exec, I mean, this could be a problem for EG. Yeah, they're mollying off short so they can, I guess, cheat back. And Neelan's like, okay, well, maybe go support A. Because if you're going to play three passive, or two passive on the site, you do need like an extra player. There aren't that many spots to stand in, but some utility comes down late. Cloud9 getting close to it. 
There could be slightly better spots for the CTs here, but three are here now. The kills have come through. Okay. Automatic takes all the pressure off. And Elon, that third man in, excellent support. It's five players slaughtered on the front of the bathrooms. They thought they could get close, and they did, but they didn't get in it. Mm -hmm. EG, now within three. Now within three, yeah. Yeah, it's been super solid on the comeback. And actually, Cloud9 only have the first three rounds. I thought they had like a versus rifle round win. It might have been their third round where they did get the 14 years ago. That's how it feels. But guns back up. See if Cloud9 change it up. Cirque's first shot, just a warning. C9 just going to keep on creeping forward here. Can't forget about automatic. Normally, Hobbit's down there to deal with him, but uh, there's no pressure to be applied to the bottom of the stairs. Cirque gives up the angle. They creep beyond, and automatic pops right back up. Again, oh. nothing to flank him. It's the same peak, but look who's wrapping divider right now. Hobbit. Hobbit knows he got by. Easy pick up onto Cirque. Now the long players can just sprint, run, forward, go, and all they have to do is topple Neil in. He's behind the truck, insta headshot onto Hobbit. That's gonna help, but Ooh. Naphany's got the answer back. So sure enough, Hobbit opening up this A site for that bomb to go down, and Automatic doesn't press up behind Connector. He joins the B rotates. Shiro burnt down to just 13 health. And the T side, they've got no smokes, no incendiaries. Can't keep EG back. This retake's coming, and they can't stop it unless they find the frags. Shiro finding Breeze on the cross to the truck. Little bit of cover, all he's got. And the fire now burns him perfectly into the open. Oh. How? With four health left, he gets the better of the first, and it's hexed up into the clutch. First player down. Bombs ticking fast. Smoke destined for the defuse, but he gets caught by Axile, and C9 finally find 15. Wow, they make it happen. It's off of Hobbit's move. They do the exact same flash tactic, actually. We got that Furia Crawl outside of Banana, and then two go by. Automatic spots the second one, and Hobbit knows that. It's a false flag. The op is vulnerable on the fallback, and this is such a valuable target to take down. Very nice done from C9 and on the attack when they get into this post plant it's still losable dude look, look at, at Shiro Shiro he stood off the Molotov that he knew they wouldn't try to approach from just to get into a really strong spot as an offer sat on default why would they think he's still there if he was floating waiting for a Molotov to finish and that ends up netting them two kills second player could not hit a bullet I don't know who that was but Well, here we go. Infamous Cloud9 scoreline. Different map, though. This time they get short water and nobody's going to contest it. Automatic's not in connector to deal with it. So Nafany's just going to look for the contact in mid site. They're spotting the boost. They're holding. If Nafany pops up, you'd think Breeze takes that head clean off. They're both worried about it. I wonder if uh, Cloud9 are trying to run a distraction first. Oh, they're just setting up their utility. Ooh. Molly's on the front of Monster. Oh, we've seen this exact. Now no deaths, lots of shots both ways. Nafany finds one, Breeze immediately with the answer. And now Nafany up again Ooh. into the site. Hexed, it's a one and done. Breeze is barely alive at this point. This B site is wide for the taking, but C9, they're not coming through. Yeah, well, they, they broke into the mid round. I think they're happy with that result and they can't just perform that attack only through short because Breeze is out towards Monster. If anybody's supporting him, then they're running into a crossfire still, and they don't know about rotations. But instead, they just go back to A, and they do it very fast. They've actually done it silently as well, so there's nothing to alarm anybody. Automatic will now corroborate this information. He can hold on to long control. They might walk backwards into him. Looks like Hobbit is unaware, not fully exposed right now, but he gets in a bank. Oh! Could this be better for Automatic? I, I think he might get a kill, but I don't know if they'll find Hobbit. Feels like he's not expecting it, and Inters is also running away. The mid play is going to serve up a distraction. Now, automatic spot is known. Hobbit could end up being the key piece, and Shiro doesn't get anything from that. It's damage in from Hobbit. Automatic. Oh! oh! Executed through the box. Next one's low, and Hobbit, just one more kill versus Cirque point blank. C9 looking to continue this run from the 0-2, and Hobbit's nailed.